Hello my YouTube world, it's Johnny Mo. Deciding to come to you today and do a little update video here. Uh, on yesterday's video, I have salt delivered. A friend of mine was at the salt place and was so nice to drop a load off for me real quick. So I'm going to bucket this up. I don't know how much is here. It could be a ton, ton and a half, two ton, I'm not quite sure. Looks to be about a ton and a half, so when I start bucking it up, I will be able to find out. I can hold about, in the five gallon buckets that I have, I can hold about 50 pounds of salt. I try to put just around 50 in it. It can hold about 60, some of the buckets are 45. Just depends on you know how filled you want the buckets to be. But don't forget that's a lot of weight for you to sling around all the time. So I try to keep it around 50 pounds and a bucket. So it take me about 40 buckets to do one ton of salt. And I think I have about 120 buckets. As far as there's some other questions, uh, I guess I made some statements about I didn't understand how people could just you know go through and just bury the parking lots because you're losing money. One of the comments I had on the video was someone trying to explain, you know, the more salt you lay down, more money you put in your pocket. I didn't quite understand that statement because how it goes up here. Say I go to a lot and I charge fifty dollars to salt that lot. The more salt you put down the less money you're going to make on that lot. So if I if I go, it's $50 and I use $25 uh, dollars worth of salt, that means I only made $25 on the lot. So if I put even more salt down, that's even less money that I would make on a lot. So basically, knowing your formulas and knowing what's coming out of that spreader is key and vital for you making money in the salt application part of it. Uh, you'll definitely do more salting than you will do plowing so you want to make sure that you're making money on the salting and knowing exactly like I could tell you what each each of these buckets cost me um, to bucket up and put it down on a parking lot and I'd make sure I monitor I monitor the weather I monitor that spreader I calibrate it uh, there are different settings in the cab in the cab it goes from 0 to 99 and there's a blast function that'll take you from whatever number you're at right now to 99 right on the spot. And sometimes I'll do that if I want to just clear the spreader out. There's a little bit of salt left over and I just want to clear the spreader and it doesn't really matter because I only take out as much salt as I'm going to use. I only use about three quarters of a ton. Uh, I don't use a lot of salt. My parking lots aren't big so I really try to monitor that weather to make sure that I'm putting the right amount of salt on that lot because that's the most important part. Now, another comment on that same person, uh, I don't remember his name, but he was explaining that he's able to go to his lot and pick up the salt in the morning. That's just not an option here because they're not open that early in the morning. I tend to get started around two o'clock in the morning and uh, sometimes a little bit later but that lots not open and it's also 40 to 45 minutes away so I gotta drive all the way out there load me up and then come the whole way back and then start my route it's just not feasible that's why I like to have the salt on site so I can continue to do all of my all, all my stuff right from a single truck load all my salt I'm gonna need for my round and like I said if it's really really cold and the ice is kind of packed up a little bit. What I'll do is I'll hit it with one round. Let's say I'm charging $50 again, same application. I hit it real quick at you know 20 pounds per thousand. I'll leave, I'll go do the rest of my route and I'll come back and start all over again. I'll, I'll hit them for another $50 to do the same thing again. That way I'm not overusing salt and that also I'm making sure that customer is very well taken care of because you don't want to overuse salt and then melt the next storm and I see that a lot around here where guys are melting the next storm or what will happen is especially with this treated salt what will happen is you'll pound the parking lot and all of a sudden it'll rain between storms like it stormed on a Monday you pounded the lot and then by Thursday it's warmed up and it's raining all that all that product is going down the sewer drain it's just not a good thing you're wasting salt and you're wasting money and I hate to see that for anybody so just some little tips create your own formulas I've created mine I've done testing on mine I remember when I first started I couldn't find out how much salt like you get a bag of salt well how much salt will that cover like how much do you need if you're doing a 20,000 square foot lot how much salt will melt that lot 
A lot goes into it, a lot goes into temperature, a lot goes into um, the bead of the salt, how big are the beads, is there any dust on the salt, is there any moisture in the air. There's a lot that goes into it, but I was able to come up with a formula and just really fine tune it over the years. It's really worked for me in ways that I can make money uh, salting. So that's my time. If you guys have any questions, I hope that I answered uh, the majority of your questions. Someone asked me about the snow blowers. They're both two cycle. Uh, they are power clears. They are Artec two cycle, 141 cc's. I like them because of this. They have the quick shoot. I love them because of that, and I didn't want to buy any of the new ones because uh, the new ones doesn't come with that, and I've never had a power issue. Those go up to, I've done probably some driveways with them, probably up to, I've done over a foot of snow with them uh, easily. I, I'm not going to say I had to go over the driveway twice. I did have to go over the driveway twice, but I, they're very reliable. They're, they're awesome. Um, I think Toro makes the best snowblower. Very happy with it. The other question I got is, do I, do I plow driveways? Absolutely, I plow them. There's just some driveways, there's nowhere to put the snow. None at all. And so what'll happen is, um, there's no way to backtrack it, there's nowhere to put it, so I just, it's easier for me to jump out, grab that snowblower, take me five minutes to do the driveway. I don't have very many driveways anymore, so I don't do, at one time I had over 40 driveways, and it took a while to to be able to turn everyone over to the snowplow. I only have a 